In section 6.3, we're look at proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we're going to look more closely at our properties of parallelograms. So our first thing says, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, so remember that means to cut in half, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Our first examples say to find the values for the variables to make the quadrilaterals parallelograms. So in number one, if LP and M is a quadrilateral, then the diagonals bisect each other, which means they'd be congruent. So we can say that 2Y minus 7 would be equal to Y plus 2. And let's go ahead and solve this equation for Y. So subtracting y, we have y minus 7 equals 2. And then add 7, we get y equals 9. Okay. Then our other equation would say 3x equals y. We just found y to be 9. So we'll let's substitute 9 in. So 3x equals 9 and x equals 3. So that means if x is 3 and y is 9, our quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, similar idea number two. Again, if quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, then our diagonals would bisect each other. So we can say that 8x plus 12 equals 10x minus 24. I'm going to subtract 8x so that I have 12 equals 2x minus 24. Then add 24 and have 36 equals 2x. Finally, divide both sides by 2. We get that x equals 18. To find y, I'm going to set my other two diagonals congruent to each other. So we would have 2y minus 80 equals y plus 9. I'm going to subtract y. So I have y minus 80 equals 9. And then add 80. We get that y equals 89. So if x is 18 and y is 89, our quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right, last example here. Um, we have two things to find here. We need to find A and C. So A has to do with angles. Remember that in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. So I'm first going to solve for A. I can say A plus 40 plus A equals 180. Combine like terms, so 2a plus 40 equals 180. If we subtract 40, we have 2a equals 140. Divide by 2, we get a equals 70. Okay, and to solve for c, so in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So we can say that 3c minus 3 equals c plus 1 and then solve for c. So I'm going to subtract c have 2c minus 3 equals 1 add 3 we get 2c equals 4 and finally dividing by 2 we have c equals 2. 
So if a equals 70 and c equals 2, then our quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In our last examples, say can you prove the quadrilateral is a parallelogram from the picture? Explain. So we're looking to see if we have enough information marked on our figure to prove that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In number four, we have a bunch of angles marked congruent. Um, we see that angle A and angle C are congruent, which is good because that tells me opposite angles are congruent. And in the interior here, we have alternate interior angles marked congruent. We have alternate interior angle here and also here. So in number four, the answer is yes. We have enough information. We know that alternate interior angles are congruent, which tells me that I have parallel lines. And also, opposite angles are congruent. Okay. Alright, let's look at number five. Do we have enough information to say it is a parallelogram? Um, in number five, we have consecutive sides congruent, not opposite sides congruent. So number five is a no. And the reason is because opposite sides are not congruent. And actually in number five we have a kite. Yeah, so this figure is a kite. And remember kites are not parallelograms. Okay, number six, do we have enough information? So we're told that we have a pair of opposite sides that are congruent and they are parallel. So number six, yes, because we have a pair of opposite sides. Let's see, so a pair of congruent, I'm just going to do the symbol there, of congruent and parallel opposite sides. Uh, let's see, number seven. In seven, we have some diagonals marked congruent. However, they're not the same diagonal. So seven's going to be a no. Because our diagonals are not congruent, they do not bisect each other. So diagonals do not bisect each other. They're not cutting each other in half. Okay, in number eight, um, we have one pair of congruent sides. However, we're not told if that pair are parallel and we do not know if the other side opposite the 8 is 8. Um, so number 8 is going to be a no. It's not enough info. So not enough information. Okay and finally number 9. Alright so we have one pair of opposite angles congruent and we have consecutive angles which are supplementary so number nine is yes opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary
There you go. All right. And this concludes section 6.3, proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram.